السلام عليكم الحمد لله رب العالمين الشهر لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله I mean I openly bear witness that there is no god but the one god his proper name is Allah and that Muhammad Ibn Abdullah is the last prophet to give us guidance in this revelation. And when we declare that there is only one God, to many it might not mean as much, but as we mature in our religion, that means that we cannot accept anything else of putting our allegiance to greater than the one God that we profess to believe in. So this helps us as we study basic Islamic teaching. When I say basic, we mean the fundamental, the things that is proper, that you can grow from, you can teach your family, children, and community that will help keep us in check with ourselves. And one of the more powerful ones is at least five <coughs> fundamental principles. But the prayer, because sometimes we get so involved in what we have to do to get it done that we may overlook saying the actual prayer of forgiveness and help that we should cry out to Allah and ask his help and guidance even when we think we know what to do. And it's because so many other things we probably experienced in our day and in our life that cause us to drift and may say things that is not correct. And one of the same thoughts that in the Holy Quran it speaks of if you find something that's going to sell your thinking or mind, call immediately on Allah to remove it. So when you hear Muslims say, to be lahi, meaning they shake down the regime. So we seek protection in Allah from those whispers of Satan and uh, those things that uh, cause us to take our mind off the beauty and sublimeness of Allah. So first and foremost, again, I thank Allah for the opportunity to come before you to share in the teachings that we learn in our Islam that have helped us as a humanity, as a human being, to follow the guidance and to improve our life and improve the life of our community and society at large. And in so doing, we can't just make up what is best. We have a road map. It's been there throughout all the religious disciplines in life. How to properly approach doing things when it comes to human behavior. Because it is easy for one to say, well, what gives you the authority to say what is best for us? And that's an excellent question. And it can't just be answered with, well, I just have power. No. If we believe that there is one God, then the proper answer is to believe in how and he has structured us to follow the discipline that we find in nature and in ourselves that will help keep us alive and help keep that nature that he put us into striving because in that nature is also the responsibility of us to help keep things going. Now, on Friday, we have a commitment and those that are not ill and sick to participate in what is called the Juma. It's not just a regular gathering, a gathering of significance, a gathering where we come to try to reinforce in our heart and mind things that will help us to keep ourselves straight and to help keep others uh, on a path that is helpful to themselves and family. And today, briefly, I would like to read another short surah, and many of you will be familiar with this surah. And at the end, 
will make a brief comment before we go into the second portion that we'll address some community issues and then we'll be dismissed in some. So in the Quran, and we say Quran, I don't take for granted that the listening audience know exactly what it means. It's our Bible, our book of guidance. And the word Quran, as explained before, is that which is to be considered, that which is to be not only read with our physical eyes, but to read into it so that we can learn the lesson, meaning read to study the signs that the Creator put out here for all humanity, so that one person alone cannot claim that they know exactly what's going on. And that's, therefore, by scientists and scientific thinking, you come up with scientists, teachers, and others that just observe what's out there in our natural environment to come up with solutions that are help us to improve our life. So in the Quran, it says this. It says, read or proclaim with the name of your Lord and cherisher, who created, created man out of a leech like cloth. So read, and it's your Lord that is most bountiful. It is Allah, the one who taught the use of the pen, taught man kind that which he knew not. Yeah. But man do transgress all bounds in that he looketh upon himself as self-sufficient. So verily to your Lord is the return of all. Seest thou one who forbids a person devoted in prayer when he turns to pray? See you if he is on the road of guidance or enjoins righteousness. Knoweth he not that Allah do see? So let him beware. If he decease not, we will drag him by the forelock. a lying sinful poor love. And then let him call for help to his counsel of comrades. We will call on the angels of punishment to deal with him. Now, feed him not, but prostrate in adoration and bring yourself the closer to Allah. Okay, last six to six. So in reading the first revelation that came to Prophet Muhammad, we can see and we are learning to appreciate, inshallah, the guidance in that first revelation so that we don't have that burden to be out scholarly of all the signs that Allah has put before us, because we can't. We can't even see what we need until we look deeper into the actual nature of things that Allah 
in his own will, gives us permission to stay. The same principle that scientists come up with. Babies have that in their inquisitive nature, meaning they inquire, what's going on here? What is this? And then through time, they learn the significance of some of the things in their environment. Likewise, scientists and scholars learn the significance of being able to impart knowledge to others, and then significantly, for what purpose? What purpose are we here? To do what? So these are the things that we, ourselves, must consider. And as we read and study the Quran, as we read and study the Quran, it gives us a pathway to continue to learn the different principles of life that are help sustain ourselves. When I say principles in life, one principle in our life is the, our attitude toward life. Because in the verse, in this very same revelation, it gives us an insight to reflect on. First, it teaches us it is Allah who taught the use of the pen. You know, we read history, we study history, we study the ancestry of where we came from and who we've probably been connected to. And But the whys and the how sometimes is not there. In the very next verse in the Quran, it says to us, it is Allah who taught man that which he knew not. So as we inquire and investigate into our own history, the thing that we need to sustain our life, just like worship. Let me say about being progressive. Or we could do this and do that. Then we know in that verse, Allah knows why we say that. And what is our intent? So it's a lot that teaches us with uh, the proper attitude in learning to give thanks and thank him so that each level of knowledge that we come into to be grateful. And in that gratitude, we have a responsibility not to become arrogant, but to become more humble and to become more of a service to the nature in which Allah has blessed us with. Meaning it's not for me to fill myself with pomp and glitter to say, okay, I'm this, no. But to share what I've been blessed to come across through studying what Allah wants us to study, the nature of this creation and the nature of ourselves. And therefore, when we do it with the right spirit, we won't become too arrogant. We won't think that we know it, that we have the solution, regardless to the amount of money we amass or come into. Because in the next verse, it says, because in that, man sometimes looking upon himself as self-sufficient. So the road map to proper understanding comes from having proper thinking. And if we think right and pray for guidance, then the results will come out much better for us. So in reading and studying the Quran and as it being a part of our Jummah, I take time to just give a little lesson so that you may go back and read it for yourself and ask Allah to open up your mind to the level of reasoning that will help you to understand better the Quran so that you can better live and apply the principles that you learn from what you have read. And I know it's easy to go through a lot of verses in the Quran. 
but this is a reflection of some of the other things in gaining things. You've heard the expression, what's the use of gaining the world when you lose your own soul? In the Quran, it reminds us who feel that, oh, I can do a better job, I know this. It says, and I always like to remind myself and others of this. It said, oh, you who believe. You see, Jewish, Christian, Muslim. Why do you invite others to practice right? At least you fail to practice it yourself. See, that gives us the right mental consciousness in our conscience to do what's right so that we don't scheme differently. But the law warns us about this in the same surah, the same chapter. He says, let him, meaning mankind, be aware that if he deceased not in that kind of way of thinking, we will drag him by the forelock. And the forelock, symbolically, is speaking of our conscious efforts to do things. When we may feel that we could do things and that we know more than others, and yet and still, we forget the preference to that thought was, we'll drag you by your lying, sinful forelock. So all truth comes from Allah. So when we invent others' things to add into that, then we mix in the truth with falsehood. So we say prayers as we read and study that Allah guide our heart and mind to stay on the right path. And if we read on the right passage in that understanding. And uh, in concluding, brothers and sisters, Allah says about gaining this knowledge, we won't gain it unless he permits it. Because Allah is the one who knows what's in our heart and mind. And so let's reflect on that. And concluding that surah of mercy is given to us, to the teachers and students of Quran about doing things on a level of reason. When it says, nay, heed him not. You don't have to follow that arrogance and that attitude or anything. But then it gives us instruction. It says, but prostrate in adoration. Meaning, let's lower, be more humble and be thankful. That's why we say, Alhamdulillah, Hi Rabbil Alameen. Give the glory to the one who has blessed us to understand the reason of our life and our purpose. And it says, and bring ourselves the closer to Allah by being more obedient. So that will conclude the first part of this Jummah Sapar, and I pray Allah, even though it was on this one particular subject matter, and gives us a perspective and our attitude when we read and study, is to take things back to Allah for a better understanding so that it will better reflect in our character. So I greet you, I laugh, once again, I greet you. I salam alaikum. And uh, in a lot of tradition here, I salam alaikum. Translation peace be unto you. There are different dialects and things, so we don't get hung up in that. Because Allah looks to our heart and uh, intention. There are some that struggle learning just a few words in the Quranic Arabic.
But if their intention is more sincere than mine, that could roll off a lot in the Arabic quotation, I'm going to tell you, it is better to be honest and sincere with the character of our nature, which Allah is blessing us with, than to uh, put on a premise for just show and tell. Because uh, we live in a time right now, and this is the second portion, that we need to become more focused on the health and safety of our community and the type of knowledge base that's been put out there that might confuse people when some say, oh, you should take this shot. No, you take that. No, do your research and learn. If it is a shot to help in these times when we know that the COVID-19, when we know that this particular virus can take hundreds of thousands of lives when we ignore certain basic principles. And then here's another thing we ignore. If we ignore the scientists that Allah blessed to come into knowledge that'll be helpful to humanity. Those are prayers answered. And if we cannot see the blessing and the prayers being answered, then we become more hesitant to respond. But I encourage us to take the safety precaution because in maybe just a very few weeks, we'll open back up. And when we do, we want to have the safeguards of respecting each other and understanding that we need to be able to be in a position to help one another. But if we ignore the safety procedure, then we just as guilty as someone who just outright uh, uh, denies the truth that stands before our own present being. And, and I tell you, as we learn to thank Allah for men and women who have studied to come up with areas to help us, here's a reflection. How many of us came up with that? So we have to learn, it's a reason for that. It's really a reason. Well, we didn't and others did. Or while we may have been a part of it. And all of those reasons lead back to one. And it's in this book, Quran, that says, and of which of the favors of your Lord can you deny? It's a favor when Allah blesses one among us to come up with the proper solution to things. It's a favor when a Allah blesses several to come and work together to help maintain and take care of the responsibility of a master. Just like it's important for us to maintain ourselves and families, the welfare, the, the look out for basic things that help one another. Because there's a lot of people today that take advantage on our weakness and illness and our lack of resources. So brothers and sisters, in my conclusion, just reflect and thank Allah for the blessing he has put before us. Assalamu alaikum.